All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about a study that came out that claims that people who identify as gamers are more likely to be racist and sexist, right? So here on the channel, we've talked about, you know, a lot of gaming studies before, things primarily at least revolving around things like do video games cause violence? Do video games pe make people more violent? Things like that. That's usually what we've kind of focused on here on the channel. But I saw this article from the New York Post talking about this study and I immediately knew I had to jump on this one for a video man because this one is actually pretty crazy right now I feel like pretty much all of us have played in a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 lobby or realistically any Call of Duty lobby and you've probably heard some of the most insane vile and ridiculous shit possible to have ever been said but even with that right you know it, it's a crazy thing for like that to be studied right and for that to be the conclusion that people who identify as people who play video games basically uh, are supposedly more racist and sexist and whatnot. So in today's video, I want to talk about, is this a gaming culture issue? Is this a study that can be taken seriously? Uh, is there really anything we can gain from knowing this? Just kind of talking about this in a, I guess, more relaxed environment, right? I feel like studies like this, they get everybody so tense, right? When we're talking about the, the topics of racism and sexism and these real world issues and things that we have to deal with, right? It tenses people up, you know what I mean? It puts people against one another when in reality, that's not how this should be taken at all. A new study reveals that people who identify as gamers are more likely to exhibit extreme behaviors such as racism and sexism. While toxicity and radicalization have long been associated with gaming culture, the The Study, released last week by Take This, a nonprofit mental health organization working with the gaming industry and community, showed just how easily gamer identity can take over a person's life and where that can lead. When the gamer identity is core to who you are as a person, that seems to reflect what we call toxic gamer culture tends to reflect more exclusion than inclusion, so things like racism and sexism and misogyny, research director Dr. Rachel Cowart told Vice Media. All these things that we know exist in gaming spaces seem to be internalized by those who very closely identify as being part of that community, Cowart said. In 2019, it was revealed by the Anti-Defamation League that 1 in 10 young gamers between the ages of 13 and 17 had been exposed to white supremacist ideology. According to ADL Research, far-right extremists use gaming communities as a hunting ground. Communities such as Steam and Discord are allegedly popular with white supremacists. All right, so I feel like this is a little loaded, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, communities such as Steam and Discord are popular with white supremacists, you know? I think that doesn't really say anything about those platforms. I think that says more about the people using those platforms, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course Discord is gonna be popular with white supremacists because it gives them a place to anonymously chat with one another and face, you know, little to no repercussions for their conversations. Like, yeah, of course, but also at the same time, millions upon millions of people use these communities in very nice ways. You know, they meet new gamers, they talk to people, they play with their friends, right? So the problem with studies like this and with the coverage of studies like this is I feel like they're very biased, you know? Of course, you know, the study concluded that the, the gamers can be more racist and sexist or whatever. Am I denying that? No, I'm not denying that. Am I worried about how that's gonna be portrayed against the gaming community in general? Absolutely, because I'm gonna venture to guess that like 90% plus of people playing video games are not racist and don't use racist language and aren't part of these white supremacist cultures or anything like that. But now they can just automatically be grouped in and associated with these groups simply because they play video games because of articles like this, you know? And it, I understand you got to cover things like this and talk about it, but it really feels like whenever video games are the subject of discussion and articles like this, they kind of word things in a way that I feel like makes people outside of the gaming communities it, like distrust gaming communities also i don't know how credible this study really is because you know usually i like to get studies from like actual research institutes or like colleges and universities or like government sources i mean any nonprofit can sit down and do a study you know what i mean does that mean that it's true not 100 like this is just one study done by one group it doesn't 100 mean this is the outcome right and on top of that i want to go into the next article because I, I have something I kind of want to criticize about this whole thing in the first place. The Take This study, which examined the attitudes of more than 300 American gamers, also closely studied the pros and cons of life inside these communities. Quote, gamer communities represent a double-edged sword. The study noted, on the one hand, they may provide a sense of connection and purpose for individuals who suffer from loneliness and insecurity. On the other hand, they may expose gamers to hateful speech and social toxicity that can increase their susceptibility to extremist propaganda. In the worst 
case scenario, gamers may be lured into embracing extremist beliefs that lead them down the path to radicalization, researchers continued. The definition of a gamer has been the subject of a heated and sometimes toxic debate. All right, so a couple things I want to point out immediately. Number one, this study only involved 300 people. That is not a very big sample size. For instance, if they found that 1 in 10 gamers were racist, right? All they would have had to do is find 30 racists out of the 300 people. That is not a very conclusive sample size, you know what I mean? I mean, sure, it, it might be barely meeting requirements for, like, what makes a study, like, rep like, I, I, what is it, credible or something like that, sure. But if this study was done with 10,000 people and not 300 people, I would take it way more seriously. And not to, once again, not to say the study's wrong or anything, because the conclusion they came to may have been true, but at the end of the day, like, 300 people, that barely would fill like a middle school gymnasium, you know what I mean? There will be a period of time where more than 300 people per minute are watching this YouTube video. That is not an impressive sample size at all, so to me that hurts the credibility of the study just a little bit. And also it says, oh, you know, gamers may be lured into embracing these extremist beliefs and going down these radicalization paths. But that really doesn't say much because at the end of the day, there's like 900 ways that you can be radicalized. And I'm going to personally make the argument that 99.9% .9 of the gamers that are getting turned into radicalized people or whatever, they were already prone to radicalization before. And if they didn't find radicalization through a video game community or Discord, they would have found a 4chan post or, you know, some subreddit or some Twitter thread. Like, these people would have found a way. You know, when there's a will, there's a way. Can video games be a way that people do horrible things? Absolutely. Should it be something that's portrayed as a gaming community problem? I don't believe so. The very extreme vast majority of people I have ever played video games with have been nice, have been polite, have been pretty decent people from what I've been able to tell. And I feel like when we talk about stuff like this, it gives a little bit of a misguide where people can like ra like radically think something about the entire gaming community. Like for instance, people can look at this article in this study and be like, wow, gamers are racist pieces of shit. When in reality, you know, it's 300 people that they did a study on and it's just some nonprofit organization that did the study. You know what I mean? So I don't know how I feel about this. I feel pretty mixed results, I guess, about this whole study, but that's not the end of this uh, that we're going to be talking about. So for some of the term applies to those who play video games on PC, while for others it means those who play competitive multiplayer games. Coward says the issues rise uh, when the gamer starts to merge their normal identity and gamer one, a process called identity fusion. We have individual identities and social identities, so I'm Rachel, a female, a gamer, I love the Witcher, these are my social identities, and they're separate, she said. Identity fusion is when the social identity, the individual identity fuses together and you can't tear them apart. The way in which fusion is shown to develop makes them more susceptible to more extreme behaviors. I think there's a pretty one set definition for a gamer. Like if you play video games, man, you're a gamer. If you're a mom playing Candy Crush on your phone, you're a gamer. If you're a dude playing The Witcher on your fucking Steam Deck in your bathroom, dude, you're a gamer. It's really not any more simple than that. Like that's just really how it goes. Like if you play video games, you're a gamer in the same way that if you smoke weed, you're a smoker. Or if you drink alcohol, you're a drinker. Or if you run marathons, you're a runner. You know what I mean? Like it's just, I feel like it's pretty easy to determine what a gamer is, no matter what your personal prejudices or whatever. If you play video games, you're a gamer. It's that simple. That's the way I see it. I think that's the way most gamers see it, but I don't know, man. I just wanted to discuss this study a little bit, kind of talk about it. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. Thank you to my Watch Optimus subscribers. Your support helps the channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus. Well, talking about gamers and signing out.